Good afternoon. 안녕하세요. 반갑습니다. Let's give another round of applause to Hepin and KCCD. Let me begin by just giving you a quick confession. This is a church after all. When the LA riots happened, I was almost six years old. And it was about 10 days away from my sixth birthday. And I thought I was old at the time because I was going to go to school that year. And I had all my school backpack and everything all ready to go, ready to enter the next stage of my life as that six year old. And then the LA riots happened. I was a young Korean American born here in the States. And as a six year old, I don't remember too much. But the one thing that I do remember is my mom, as she sat on our sofa and watching the screen as buildings went up in fire, as people were getting shot to death, as windows were getting broken into. And I saw my mom's face as she had shock and awe in her eyes. And the one word that she muttered to herself was, why? Why? And in my naive youth, as I look back, I thought that that why was all about why weren't the LAPD there on time when we need them most. I thought that why was because she was asking why didn't the leaders in Washington, D.C., the leaders in our community stand up? Why did our community leaders not speak out for us? That's the why that I thought she was asking. But as I saw my mom live her life, I realized that that why was something else. You see, like many of the folks here in this room, she came to this country with the simple belief that if she tried hard, she worked hard, that she can achieve the American dream, and she did. She went on to get her bachelor's degree here in this country of a country that she didn't understand, whose language she didn't understand, a country where she had very little networks. She went on to get her master's degree. She got her PhD. She became a professor. She wrote her dissertation, and now is a tenured professor at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. My mom is my hero. And I know that. I know that her spirit is alive, and her spirit is alive and well in our community today, and that, that is the power of our community, and the power of the immigrants that make our country so strong. And I realized that that why was not about where were they, why didn't they step up for us, that why was all about looking at ourselves. Why didn't we find the strength as a community to stand up, to speak up, to let our voices be heard? As Hepin mentioned, I have the honor of serving as the White House Director of Asian American and Pacific Islander Outreach. And I've been in Washington, D.C. long enough to know that there are folks in that city and there are folks around this country who are willing to give Korean Americans, Asian Americans, a seat at the table, as long as they can count on us to remain silent. And if we need to learn anything from Sae Gu, it's that we have an obligation to speak out when there is an urgency to do so. And that's not the seat we want, and that's not how we're going to use our chair, ladies and gentlemen. And even though the looting is over and most of the buildings that have burned down have been rebuilt, the riots have long been over, but the struggles in our community and around this country are still alive and well. There are folks that are counting us on us to be silent. But in those moments, we must speak out. When there are those who say that we don't need health reform, speak out because we know that in our community of Asian Americans, our children are among the most uninsured in the country. When they say that we don't need to have tax reform for small businesses, speak out because we know that it's our laundromat owners and our mom and pop store owners and our liquor store owners that make this country so strong today when they use arbitrary redistricting laws to find ways to divide our communities instead of unite us, speak out when they turn a blind eye to bullying that's happening in our communities and our classrooms, especially to the Asian American children, our children, we need to speak out. When they say that Asian Americans won't go to the polls, they're not going to vote, that they don't have a voice, speak out and prove them wrong. And when they say that Asian Americans are not fast enough strong enough, can't chew well enough to play in the NBA, speak out, because that's who we are. Because generations of Americans have spoken out for us. Dr. King led a movement and marched 
so that we can have the opportunities that we have today. Caesar Chavez picketed so that we can have the opportunities that we have today. Si se puede. Veterans have fought and have died for us so that we can have the opportunities that we have today. Speak out. And when we speak out, don't simply speak out so that we can shine a light on our own community and our own needs. But speak out for those that seek justice. Speak out for those like us who seek opportunity. And if you benefited from an immigration law that allows you to come up from the country where you were born to come to this country for an education and opportunity, then you will back to the next generation of immigrants to repair those policies so that these immigrants can come to this country and pursue the American dream, even though they don't speak the same language as us, even though they don't look just like us. And if you benefited from an education system that allowed you to pursue a higher education and pursue your own dreams, then you owe it to the next generation of young people, especially those here in Los Angeles, who believe that it's okay to drop out of school the school system is failing them, we need to speak out. This is our moment, church. This is our moment, Asian Americans. This is our moment, Los Angeles. This is our, mom our moment, America. Let me close by just saying one quick story. In high school, I wrote a paper my senior year on the LA riots. It's the only paper that I remember writing simply because that's the only paper I remember getting an A on in high school. And I remember specifically writing about a young man named Edward Lee. And what shocked me was that he was the same age as I was, 18 years old. What shocked me was that he had the same name as me, Edward Lee. And not only that, he shared the same story as I did. Like my parents, his parents came to this country and sacrificed a lot, if not everything, so that their children can grow up in a country where they can pursue a better life than themselves. Their children can pursue higher education. That their children can pursue their passions and their dreams. That is the country, that is the promise that we have given to our next generation. And on that fateful day when Edward was shot to death, I can only imagine the pain that you felt, Mrs. Lee. But, his son is not, his, but your son's death is not in vain. And I am proud to share that namesake with your son because your son demonstrated a boldness that I can only dream of having. Your son died with the simple hope of keeping this dream alive and your legacy, your son's legacy is a reminder to all of us that we can't quit this fight to better ourselves, to make our community to heard, and to make this country stronger. So ladies and gentlemen, we must not forget the memories of the LA riots of Saigu. Let us not forget the legacy of Eddie Lee, who gave his life on that day. Let us not forget the promise we hold to our community and to ourselves to ensure that the next generation of Americans grow up in a better world than ours. Because that's what it means to be an Asian American, a Korean American. That's what it means to be an American. And that's what it means to serve. That's what it means to love church. And church, what it means, that's what it means in the book of Micah, chapter 6, verse 8, when God commands to seek justice, to love mercy, to walk humbly with our God. Speak out, let your voice be heard, because when we speak out, we'll find our voice. When we speak out and press on, justice will prevail. And when we stand together, church, we cannot be stopped. Thank you, and God bless you all. Our future is in good hands.